Hi everyone and welcome to another Facebook Live Monday. You're joining me today to talk about grief and sex. This is a question that I actually got from one of my podcast listeners and Patreon supporters, which I'm so grateful to receive uh, your questions and support of the show as well, which is really exciting. So we'll be getting into how our relationships or intimate relationships change as a result of loss uh, in just a few seconds. Really quickly, I do want to let you know that this is the last Facebook Live I'll be doing for a while. This is uh, the podcast that's coming up in two days on Wednesday, July 18th is going to be the grand finale of season three of Coming Back, and then I'll be launching season four on September, what is that day? I've got calendars in two different places in my room, September 5th. So this Wednesday, J July 18th will be the end of season three. September 5th will be the beginning of season four. So I'm taking a month off or a little more than a month uh, in August to both celebrate my birthday and to kind of reconvene, do some long form interviews, get things kind of packed up and all squared away before I come back and visit you in September, which is very exciting. Uh, if you'd like to see me live between now and then, you can definitely uh, support the show on Patreon, which is a support that goes year round, month by month by month. And if you support the show at $33 or more per month, you get one-on-one -on -one time with me live for an hour every single month. And the first, uh, of those meetings is coming on July 30th at 7 o'clock p.m. and the one that's happening in August is August 27th at 7 o'clock p.m. So despite the fact that coming back the podcast will be taking a break from long-form interviews, uh, I will still be doing those live events on July 30th which is a Monday and August 27th which is a Monday as well. So this week uh, I got a question from a listener. Actually, I got this question a little bit ago, but I wanted to make sure that I set aside time to do some research on this because I have my own experiences with grief and sex. And of course, everyone out there watching, you will have your own experiences with grief and sex as well. And one of my listeners essentially wrote me and her father died. And she said, it's, it's interesting to me. It's fascinating to me. I wanna hear more, I wanna know more because f leading up to his death and pretty much for about two to three months after he died, I just had no interest in having sex. I had no desire for intercourse. I had no, just that level of intimacy is not something that I wanted. And she's like, is this normal? Are other people experiencing this? Is this common in grief? And my response is yes, of course, automatically, because I think when anybody is asking, is this normal in grief? The answer most likely 99.99999% of the time is yes. But I really wanted some research and some stories of others to, to back me up on this. So on this week's podcast, I really dove into how people respond to sex while grieving. And I, from the stories that I read, from the research I did, from the books that I have accumulated in my brain over the years, uh, there's essentially two camps that people fall into. There are people for whom loss happens and they disconnect from sex, and there are people who for whom loss happens and they connect to sex. And neither is better or worse than the other um, because people do it for different reasons. People reach for sex for different reasons and they disconnect from sex for different reasons. And so this week I kind of broke down three in each camp. And of course, you might have reasons that fall outside of these, but from what I read, from what I studied, and what I was able to kind of accumulate after this question was asked, it really seemed like these six responses are some of the most common responses to sex. So we'll kind of go through all of those today, and you can hear them again in deeper uh, detail, as well as the sources where I got this information on the podcast this week as well. So I'll kind of start off in the disconnection camp, because this is what my listener uh, wrote in asking, is if I'm disconnecting from sex, is that normal are other people out there that do it are there other stories of this and the answer to that is yes and so the first reason that people disconnect from sex while they're grieving is that the person they lost is the person they were having sex with for monogamous couples this is hugely important uh, if you were married to the person if you were dating the person if you had just started seeing the person and they died your sex life ends as a result of their death and uh, many people choose to stop having sex altogether after the person that they were having sex with died. And so it's it's interesting and, and it's a choice that people make. And one of my favorite uh, guests on the show, Debbie Augenthaler, wrote a book called You Are Not Alone. And she has this chapter about re-emerging into the world again after losing her husband, uh, Jim. And she writes this really beautiful kind of paragraph that I read aloud on the podcast this week that's about um, 
what her experience was like coming back to sex and coming back to intimacy again after losing her husband and it took her two years to get back to that place because the person who died was the person she was having sex with and there's a lot that comes with this there's the pressure of friends and family to be in relationships or start dating again there's your own physical desires but maybe not being emotionally ready and then there's of course the this is not quite the phrase I want to use, but the breaking in that has to happen. So if you're staying in the same house, bringing someone new into your home, into your bed, into your life and relationship, there's a level of intimacy there that you used to share with this person who died who is now gone. And so you stop having sex until a, a new person emerges. You may choose to have stop having sex permanently, but that's a big reason that people disconnect from sex. A second reason that people disconnect from sex while grieving is that they are grieving. And this kind of is for anyone who did not lose a person they were having sex with. So if you lost somebody you're having sex with, you would stop having sex with them. But um, if you're falling into the other camp of I was not having sex with the person I was losing, whether it was a person, a child, a, a co-worker, a parent, um, a, a neighbor, what have you, a lot of people choose to stop having sex or stop having sex not by choice, but because their their hearts aren't in it. The emotion is not there. The, the mental, emotional heart capacity to carry an energy of sex that is something that can be so connecting and so restoring um, and so intimate that level is just too much um, for some it sounds like a lot of people that is too much raw emotion to be bringing into the bedroom for some people it would seem overwhelming on top of everything else all the other grief emotions that are already going on and for a lot of people there's just a total disinterest I've got so much else going on here I've got so much else going on here how could I possibly be concerned with what's going on here and of course I'm motioning uh, lower but you can't see this off camera um, how could I possibly be concerned with something like sex? And so there's so much going on in these two spaces often when we're grieving that we don't, you know, sink lower into these primal urges, these primal desires, and these primal connections with people because there's so much else going on. Logistically, there are things to plan. There are other people to take care of. There are ourselves to take care of. There's things at work. There's memorials. There's planning. You know, there's just a lot outside of ourselves that takes place. And similar to a period of great stress in our lives, sometimes we are unable to have sex in those times as well. And grief is a great stress. And so, of course, it would make sense uh, if the person who died was not someone you were having sex with that you would stop having sex with the partner that you currently have because you are under a great deal of stress, under a great deal of grief experiencing all of those emotions. The last reason that I found, and this was interesting in my research, that a lot of people stop having sex after they lose someone or after a great loss is because their religion or spiritual uh, beliefs kind of dictate that they should. And this is true for really, you know, straight and narrow religion that's been written down. But this is also true uh, for, for spirituality, for energetic beliefs that are maybe personally held and not so universally held by a large group of people, that um, you should not have sex either to honor the death, to honor yourself, to work on re-restoring your body. There's some kind of internal spiritual practice that happens for a lot of people where they feel they should not be engaging in sex with other people. One blog I read was really fascinating, and I um, talked about this on the podcast as well, is that uh, this woman felt like you should not have sex after a loss, especially the loss of a spouse, because you transfer that dark grief energy that you're carrying to the person that you're having sex with, where sex is an exchange of wounds. And that was really fascinating to me. I haven't heard it phrased that way before, although I'm a person who agrees that energy is exchanged uh, while sex is happening. So that was really interesting and really fascinating to me. But then, of course, there are more mainstream religious beliefs in the Christian faith, Jewish faith, Muslim faith that all... Um, dictate in different ways how you should operate in intimate relationships and with your own body after a loss occurs. So that's that was really fascinating to me. If anybody um, is not having sex or choosing to have sex in spite of religious beliefs or something related to religion, I would absolutely love to hear from you today. So uh, comment below. That's new territory for me. So those are three from the the disconnect side of sex. I'm going to talk up really quickly about the three reasons that I found, big reasons that people plug into sex, engage with sex, there's people that disconnect and people that plug in. And from what I found and from my own personal experience being a person who has grieved and then had sex very shortly after, is that the biggest reason that people have sex after loss is to feel held, to feel like they are connected to other human beings, to feel alive. Uh, a lot of people see it as one of my favorite books that I ever read about grief kind of compares it to a defiant act of 
creation in the face of destruction because death is total destruction whether it's an actual death or a loss that you're experiencing the death of an old life having sex is something that can plug you back into feeling life feeling alive feeling nurtured by another human being being nurtured by yourself uh, even the sensations of bringing brought back to your physical body again are really strong and really powerful and that's a big reason that a lot of people choose to have sex in the aftermath of loss. The second reason is because of something that the grief recovery method would call a STIRB, a short-term energy relieving behavior. And this is kind of in the same vein as wanting to feel connected, um, but with a different lean to it, a different slant to it of wanting to blow off steam, of wanting to put the restless energy of grief, maybe the circling energy of grief somewhere. A lot of people with STIRBs, other short-term energy relieving behaviors can be shopping or eating or drinking or escaping to fantasy like a game or binging on Netflix or um, even a book or workaholism, things like that. Things that you do that you plug into to kind of diffuse the energy of grief for the short term. And sex is one of those things. You can escape to new relationships or even old relationships or having a ton of sex uh, to, to blow off that energy, to get that energy more or less out of your body and that's a really um, that's also a really big reason that people connect to sex to choose to plug into sex after a major loss happens the last reason that I think a lot of people have sex in the aftermath of loss is because they're looking to show either themselves or other people consciously or unconsciously that they are able to move on that they are moving forward with their life again, that they're pursuing new things, that they are re-engaging with their old selves if you're returning to a pre-existing sexual relationship after a loss. Um, if you're going to a new one, it's that you're ready to explore new possibilities, be with new people, try on the world again after a loss. And whether or not this is effective is, you know, depends on how you engage with your relationships, depends on how honest you are with yourself and with the people that you're seeing, depends on how much you've worked through your loss. But for a lot of people, I think sex is, is a way to say, okay, I'm moving on, I'm moving forward, look at me, I'm having sex. And so it's, it's just a really fascinating uh, mentality and action that a lot of people do to say, hey, I'm plugging back into the world again. I am, I'm rejoining the living for lack of better phrasing. And those, that was um, the third of three big reasons why people connect to sex again. But this is a fascinating question and a fascinating relationship. And what's unfortunate, and I talked about this on the podcast, is that sex is still something that's taboo in our culture, of course, to talk about publicly. It's fascinating to me that I'm doing a Facebook Live on grief and sex, which is something I don't know if I ever thought I would do in my lifetime. Um, but now that I'm here, I'm really enjoying kind of opening up this book. But uh, I, I struggled to find resources on this online, in books, what have you, because it is something that's still so taboo and in grief. It's almost like the focus is more on the pain and what you've lost and you know what needs taken care of legally, financially, childcare, school, work, etc. So sex kind of gets this bottom rung on on the line, on on the ranking of things that happen in regards to grief that need to be addressed, that need to be talked about and taken care of. And so the fact that we're opening up here is a really big, is a big deal. Uh, I will tell you for further reading, if you are somebody who has lost a spouse and are grieving the loss of that sexual relationship, there's a really beautiful article that Modern Loss does that was actually picked up, I believe, by the New York Times. Uh, and it's about sexual bereavement. And it's a really fascinating concept to grieve a sexual partner. And it's something that we don't talk about in the world of grief. Um, to to grieve someone that we're having sex with and to grieve being touched in that way and it's so frustrating because a lot of books and a lot of articles will say oh just go get a massage oh just ask for a hug from your children oh just substitute it with like rubbing your hands or your feet or what have you and these are all great self-care things and great practices and being plugged into the world in different ways but nothing can compare to having sex with someone you used to have sex with or want to have sex with it's a different kind of touch and so it's a really beautiful piece i believe the woman's name who wrote it is alice and Radosh, R-A-D-O-S-H, but it was a piece that was published in Modern Loss and then picked up by the New York Times, and it's about sexual bereavement, and that's kind of another vein you can go in with grief and sex as well. 
Uh, once again, this is the last uh, Facebook Live I'll be doing for a little bit until September when Coming Back Season 4 uh, debuts on September 5th, 2018. It's a whole new cast of characters coming in and interviews and all that jazz. If you'd like to join me live in the meantime, I would absolutely love uh, if you pledged on Patreon and got the link to access the hour-long uh, live that I do on Google Hangout once a month. The next one is happening on July 30th. The one after that is happening on August 27th, and you can pledge on Patreon at patreon.com slash Shelby for Scythia. Anyone pledging $33 a month or more, so the price of like a subscription box or something like that, it's about a third the price of therapy, so it's like getting one-on-one -on -one time with me uh, for really, really cheap, which is really lovely. And you get to ask questions, ask for books and resources, things of that nature, or we can just talk about whatever you want for an hour. Um, that is on patreon.com slash Shelby for Scythia. And really quickly, if you're still interested in joining us on the Bereavement Cruise 2019, this is sailing March 3rd through 10th, you can find all of that information always on my website, shelbyforsythia.com. There's an announcement bar at the top of every single page that will invite you to click on it. There's also uh, a page under Work With Me called the Bereavement Cruise 2019 that you can certainly click on as well. I think that's all I have for you today. Thank you for joining me to talk about grief and sex and the relationship between the two, I would love to either hear your discussion in the comments below, or if you're not feeling like airing out, you know, what happens in the bedroom between uh, grief and your sex life in these public comments, I would absolutely love if you joined us privately in my private Facebook group, The Grief Grower's Garden, which is specifically curated with people who are actively grieving and in a space where they can hold supportive energy for other people. So you get pre-screened before you come in. Are you able to hold space? Have you experienced a loss? And then it's a very attentive and loving group of people who are willing to share stories and go deeper and support on that really kind of foundational level in grief. And so if you'd like to share your story there with us, I'll be sharing mine this week as well, uh, as promised on the podcast in regards to grief and sex. So I do hope to see you there. As always, my dear grief growers, it was beautiful to share this space and time with you today. I see you. I am so proud of you and the work that you're doing in the world. And I love you. I'll see you live on Facebook again for season four.